It's a high-tech conversation. And a low-tech topic. Live on the World Wide Web via Zoom. Bench Talk 101. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Bench Talk 101. Uh, this week on our Topic Talk series, we'll talk about hammers and our favorite hammers at that. So uh, let's get hammered. So if anyone who hasn't joined before, uh, or those of you who don't remember, uh, if you want to speak, pop your name in the chat and I'll ask you to speak when it's your turn. So if anyone wants to put their name in the chat. Matthias, as always. Well, you know, someone had to dethrone Chester. <laughs> anyway, no, uh, someone's got to get the party going. As usual, when it comes to favorite tools, it's difficult to choose. I did a quick head count, and I think I've got something in the region of 12 or 13 hammers, depending on your definition of what is and what isn't a hammer. And if you start to include mallets and stuff, there are another few. But anyway, so I, I brought up three, two runners up and uh, the winner of the favorite. So uh, third runner up is a Swedish classic. It's a 24 ounce uh, claw hammer from Thor's Hammer, Thor Hammer. Uh, it's not the same brand as the British Thor. But obviously, they came up with the same idea for what are we going to call a hammer brand? Well, Thor, obviously. Uh, these are not made anymore. So this, I bought this one. It's new old stock or more likely probably from a civil defense government stockpile that got a decommission when the Cold War ended and eventually made its way out into the market. So I don't know exactly how old this one is, but probably made in the 70s, maybe, something like that. It's a very nice hammer, well-balanced, hickory handle. Uh, second runner-up is on the other end of the scale. It's uh, the Sterling Toolworks plane adjusting hammer. I use that this a lot. It's great for adjusting planes, obviously, but I also use it when I want to just knock something ever so slightly this way or that way to adjust it. For, for example, when I'm trying to pinpoint the right place uh, under the drill press and want to move a piece of wood instead of trying to do with the hands, a light touch. And also if I put the nylon spud on, it's great for uh, adjusting or for, for uh, retentioning back source. I use it for that a lot as well, or a lot, but I use it for that as well. But the winner was uh, what I, I think others might bring this one up as well. It's a modern classic, the Crucible Lump Hammer. Uh, it's 2.2 pounds, I think, about a kilo. It's beautifully balanced. And it's, I love it because it, can be both very, very subtle and gentle, but when you need to give, give something a really good whack, it has all the power that you need and, and some more. It's fantastic, for instance, for uh, driving in drawbar pins, drawbar pegs, I love it for that, but also basically and any job in the shop where I need a bit more of whack, it's the this one that I get out. So that was my contribution. Cheers, Matthias. We're over to uh, Jim. Ah, ah, hello, everybody. Um, yeah, I think I'll go for what Matthias tried. I, I did have, I've got so many hammers, I, I just, and I love all, all of them, but uh, I, I, for, for dinkiness, I think, I think this is absolutely one of my favorites. It's, it's a tiny little hammer that I use for delicate work. And um, it is actually a, a, an amazing, amazing shape and vintage and it's all original and uh, I use it for a lot of very small metal work on um, on tools. Um, second is somebody in the States gave me a piece of um, of uh, tiger maple, stri uh, striped maple and I spent ages trying to work out how to make it, uh, the stripes more clear and using various chemicals and everything and this turned out to be uh, the result 
and it's matured into such a beautiful, beautiful pattern on it. Uh, African blackwood, tiger maple. So it's, it's a lot of sentimental value because it was a small piece of really crazy firewood that he found. And as you can see, it uh, has a massive amount of chatoyancy, as Shrenik would say. And I suppose the, the latest I really have to say is having got the, um, the, the mallet that we, uh, hammer that we talked about a, a few months back uh, with Carl Holte. Um, this is actually a piece of engineering masterpiece. Uh, one of his uh, plane adjusting hammers with uh, lignum heads and um, stainless steel and boxwood. And it is um, a stunning piece of um, tool work. So I think that from an engineering point of view, I think mm -hmm. this is one I appreciate the most. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jim. And uh, we have our guest speaker from uh, from a while back, who's decided to rejoin us today, Mark. Hello, Mark. You might have to unmute yourself. I'm unmuted. There you go. Hey guys, what are you sliding me in? Yeah, we are. Oh, brilliant. Okay, here. Uh... All right, I'll call you later. Yeah. Um, Ten ounce titanium uh, stiletto. That is, this is my favorite hammer and, and I've been doing this a long time. Um, and this thing is just, it's just 10 ounces, but it's completely replaced a 16 ounce um, steel hammer in my kit. And you can just, you can, you can swing it all day. Um, and it's, it's fun, you know, on, on site guys are, big hammers and, and whatever, but this little, this little bugger does everything you need it to do. And if, um, and if it doesn't do it, then you've messed up something earlier. You know what I mean? Like a, a hammer ain't going to fix it. I'd move it at that point. Um, so yeah, this little finished carpenters, uh, hand, well, I wouldn't say it's really a finisher's hammer cause it's got a fairly straight claw. Um, but you're not supposed to be pulling nails anyway. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's brilliant. I don't know if you guys get stiletto um, in the UK, but, uh, or Europe, but if you can get a 10 ounce titanium hammer, it, it transfers the same amount of energy as a 16. Um, and you can just go all day. And when you're carrying it on your person in your apron, uh, you know, that extra six ounces off it, it um, it counts, especially when it's 115 degrees. And this is the one that I pulled out as well. It's, it's just such a, like everybody agrees, right? This is, it's worth its weight in steel. So yeah, let's keep the show on the road. Thanks uh, for sharing, Mark. Cheers. Thank, thank you for coming back again. Welcome yeah. back. All right, we're over to Stephen. Okay, okay. Um... Let's see, need to get me on to the, highlight me. Mark's still highlighted. Oh, there we go. Okie dokie. Um, my favorite hammer, well, first off, I got the Crucible Lump Hammer too, and it's, it's really good for its projects. But when I'm doing historic woodworking, um, this hammer is the one that I use most of the time. The, the head was dated by the early American industries um, as uh, late, late 1700s blacksmith manufactured. Wow. And uh, it's had a numerous number of owners. And I think whoever put this handle on back in the 1920s or 30s was brilliant because this was this hammer will just go all day. And when, when the grasp in the hand, the balance and the weight, it just feels like a natural extension off of your, um, off of your arm. Uh, it, it's, it's just, that's one of the things about hammers that I found so interesting is that, cause I've got, I have a hammer collection that I take down to the fort and, and show from the 1700s to modern day. I've got Stanley's with uh, tuning fork 
where they're trying to cut down on carpal tunnel wrist injuries. I've got, um, I have an, a couple different sizes of the titanium um, uh, hammer that was just, show, I think Mark was just showing. I love it. It's, it's, it's just, it too feels natural in the hand, but my focus is the old, old ages. So the problem with this is if I'm doing spikes or large nails, um, this is not really a, enough. I, I don't want to damage the, the, the front end of it. So what I've done is I'm now in the process of experimenting with its two and a half pound brother. You can see there's definitely a weight difference. And um, I've restocked this with hickory and I'm, I'm playing around with shorthand, longhand. So if I need to tap something that's, that I need to do close hit work, this gives me a little bit more mass to throw onto the top of the nail. But I also have the grasp in the back. So if I'm, I'm really whacking a, uh, a spike, um, then this will, this will definitely handle it. Now, it, in the... In the it's when I bought it, I just bought the hammerhead for $2 at a, a local tool auction. They had some split off over here. And that's one of the reasons why you need to wear glasses when you're using a hammer. But I decided to just smooth it over and keep it just so I could do that kind of a safety talk when we're discussing the use of hammers at the fort. So that's it for me. Here's Stephen. Um, let's go over to uh, Scotland with Scott. Evening, everybody. Um, see, seeing as people are doing top threes, um, I could go on all day. I'll start with my everyday hammers that I use all the time, and those are S-wings. 24 ounce um, with a curved claw. Same length as the 20 ounce. Um, I've had the 20 ounce since I was 16. Uh, I love it. Uh, just weighted. People will know that you get used to it. 24 ounce hammers in, four inch nails easy. A couple of drives. Use them all the time at work. Um, next favourite, which is going to be slightly unusual, is a little cross pin. Essex London pattern. And I like to turn my heads upside down. I prefer the shape of them. It's a bit, looks the same shape as Jim's had. Uh, it's got a nice shaped palm swell on the back of it. It's not heavy. It's great for peening. Absolutely brilliant peening hammer. Lovely weight. And to finish off, um, I started off plane hammers. I bought a um, Phil Edwards plane hammer. It's got cork in the face. I think it's cork on that face. I think it's a walnut head. It's still a little bit too big for most of my hammers. So I've just finished making one this week, um, which is what one now? So that is Desert Island Wood Head. Octagonal on the top. See some of the bevels on that. Tapered in the back. Just finished polishing that up the other day. That's an ash handle on that as well, and that's perfect for the the carter the carter plane. Just because then just a wee tap, that's all you need. It doesn't need to be that heavy. Just finished that just recently. How heavy is that? Is it... it doesn't need to be heavy, not for a carter plane. Just needs a wee tap. So if you just me. Yep. Just a tap. That's as much as it needs. Doesn't need any more than that. You don't need a big heavy hammer for them. So um the head's possibly slightly light. Um I was expecting desert ironwood. It's got beautiful grain on it to be but it works. Uh that and I'm just playing with never made a hammer before. So it's the first one I've ever made. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Scott. And uh we're over to Paul. Hey guys. So, uh, like the Scots, but the opposite way around. But what I love about this hammer is it's one which I picked up. It's not one which I've had a long time, but it's just a complete rustic nature of the handle. But it feels nice, but it's obviously been uncovered. I don't even know if it was actually been burnt. 
but I do, I do like this head pattern. It's just, it's just nice. And yep, it, that's this one's also got a bit of chipping. So that's one. Other one is this one, which I picked up, which is just a little tacking hammer. You know, for upholstery. Uh, but it's quite nice and small, so I do sometimes use it just to tap the odd other thing in, which probably shouldn't, but uh, hey, what the hell. And the last one is one which I've just picked up, and that is part of a Thor hammer. So I've got the copper head, but that's missing. But I've already used that to, to nicely drive in a uh, wood stake into the garden at Mum's because... Uh, I needed a hammer and that was in the boot. And uh, it's a beast. I must be done. Did you say you hammered a stake into the gardener? No, into the garden. Oh, okay. I am. I guess, Bill, I, I'll turn on closed captions. <laughs> oh, I honestly that. don't think that will help Smithy if you turn on closed captions. He's still going to kill the gardener. It's like it an Agatha Christie me. story. It won't help anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> the God that did it. <laughs> right, over to Richard Hughes. Hello. I've just been told that my internet connection is unstable, so <laughs> I hope you all can hear me. Yes, we can. Um, Carry on. Yeah, okay. So uh, this one here, it's interesting little hammer. I don't know what, uh, what trade it belongs to, but I, I find it very useful for, uh, for riveting and some other metalwork jobs. But uh, I think it's really very nicely made with uh, these facets around the, around the side of it here. It weighs eight ounces and... Yeah, it's a nice thing, and I, I'd really like to know what its what its true uh, original purpose was. So that's is it that not one. for a gas gas a gas fittings? Because they you put the other you put the tip into the pipe, and then you tap the other end, and it flares the end. Uh, I think I, 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 I don't think so. No, uh, but uh, I could be I could be um, could be wrong. But, um, I think it's. I think it belongs to a it obviously belongs to a specialist trade of uh, one one sort or another. And I've, I've asked on oh. various forums um, what it might oh. be what it might be for, but I, do, I all I usually get is some 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 rude remarks concerning the the shoe mending trade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's not my, you spot my joke. <laughs> well, anyone who's watching on demand on YouTube, if you know the answer, put it in the comments. Okay, yeah, I'd be, be very grateful if, if somebody uh, can uh, identify. And one other one here. So this one is, a, it's a Stanley 10-ounce um, Warrington pattern hammer. So fairly, fairly ordinary hammer. Uh, it was made in the early 1960s, but it's, it's special, special to me because it was the first hammer I was given by my father at the, at the age of about 10. And that's it, and thank you very much. Cheers, Richard. Uh, on to Will, Will Graham. Hey, everybody. Can you see me? I don't use hammers very much, but when I'm working on my planes and um, have been doing a lot of work with this, I really like my whole, and I, uh, it says it's a work for it, but it's just uh, an eight ounce ball piece. Um, hammer. That's one that I've been using an awful lot. The other hammer I used to use a lot was this one. Oops, there you go. Um, it's um, it's a, a, a roll of leather on the head. I'm not sure where it came from, but it was my grandfather's. Um, and it kind of ended up with me. Um, I was using it for, you know, working on my chisels, but I never liked the, the handle. But if we're working with chisels, this is my favorite. It is um, one I made. It's um, a crap piece of tiger maple at the top. Uh, I can't remember what I used this uh, layer to handle. Uh, 
I didn't have a lathe, so I didn't turn it. Sorry. And it's, um, I've been using it for like chopping dovetails or just whatever I want with my chisels. It's very easy on my chisel head uh, handles. It doesn't, doesn't um, deform them too much. As you can see, it's only been a little bit of use for the heavy use I have. But that, those are my two favorites right now. It's uh, bulking and that. I do have this uh, Lee Valley thing, but I don't use it that much anymore. Uh, really. That's it. All right. Cheers, Will. We're over to Richard. Richard Berry. Good evening, everyone. Um, just like Jim and Scott, I have a very similar little cross peen hammer with a nice bulbous end on this one. Um, that would be my favorite hammer, uh, just because it's nice and cute and dinky. But my other favorites are my mallets that I make. And I was lucky enough to get a whole lot of plumbing fittings when a uh, school was demolished and the, uh, the, all the, the brass fittings were um, left uh, for collect, or you know, just dumped and I collected them. And I make these mallets. And this is the first one I made. It's a bit bigger. Uh, than my favorite. I'll show you the favorite, but it is a bit of a beast. It's got a lot of mass from all the brass, a nice good face. It's great for driving home stubborn joinery like dovetails or things like that. Now this is my favorite. I use this, pick this one up all the time for uh, using with my, my chisel. Now I'll, I'll just, it's just a perfect weight. It's got a nice big face, um, don't have to think about it. I just drive my um, my chisels. And here's one that I'm trying to go like this, it's Purple Heart. Um, and that's, there's a handle still to come. Now, in, if anyone's interested, I want to show you how I put them together. Now, this one has a, a wooden top that screws in. So I can open this one up. And I just thread it on the brass and I turn that round and then use the brass to, to thread it. And so you've got to have a reasonably dense wood to be able to this, the thread. But you can see what I do for the handle is I have a, a wedge that I drive up there onto the back. So I just insert the handle with the wedge in place and then drive it through and that holds it firmly in place. Now, there are different fittings. Not all of them screw in like this one. Some of the Colpex ones, uh, like this one, is smooth on the inside and the thread is on the outside. So I can't thread that one. So I do the similar sort of thing. That one is a Colpex. So after I've driven the handle in with a wedge, I do the same with the faces. I put a wedge in the face and I drive that in and the handle, where the handle is, it just pushes back and wedges them in nicely and they are great. I love them. And I intend to make a few more. I have a fair amount of stock to work with and I've got more. That's just a bit of a sample of what's available to me. So there we go. Cheers, Rich. Do you use um, just metal working dies to um cut the threads into the wood? No, I just use the, the brass thread on the, on the fitting and I just turn it in a little, little by little, back it off, turn it in a bit more, back it off and yeah, it cuts the thread beautifully. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Cheers. <clears throat> uh, Richard, uh, sorry, Chester. Ah, um, I, I waited to put my name in because I wanted to see what other people had because I didn't want to repeat too much of it. And um, I, I wanted to make sure I was showing something that was um, different. I, I have a few selected. I have over 50 or 60 hammers, um, and, but you guys probably figured that. Um, this, is, this is one of my favorites. This is, um, this is a, a Marks hammer. 
It's just a toy hammer from my little toy collection. I have a plane also by Marx. It's just a little plastic hammer. It's just fun. So uh, this is another little one that um, I'm confused about uh, because this was uh, in my father's things. And, uh, but the reason that I love it, you can see how, you can see how small that handle is. But one of the reasons that I really love it is that whoever made it, and I don't know that it was my father or someone else, they did this beautiful job of threading this piece of boxwood here. And so it just um, fits in really nicely. I have no idea of the age. It's a piece of rosewood here. Oops, sorry, here. And a piece of boxwood. It's about eight inches long. Then uh, I have this when my uncle passed away. He had this, uh, this combination hammer and screwdriver set in the box. And um, so his son gave this to me. And um, I thought it was kind of cute and funny. Um, it's uh, called a six in one. And you, you open up this end here and um, inside are screwdrivers continuing down into eyeglass size. Inside there is another one and another one like a Russian box, um, but I won't put you through all that. But what I thought was interesting about it and it sort of surprised me was this shape. And I think that Jim might be right that that bevel it could be put into the end of a pipe and tapped here and use it to flare a pipe for some reason. Um, otherwise, I don't know why you would hit anything with this shape on the end of it. But the funny thing is that I got this one and, um, and then this came online with a similar shape and I bought it, but I bought it really because it's, it's all brass or bronze, I'm not really sure, um, but it has a similar cone shape but this one's been beaten on. And then it has this shape end here, I'm not really sure what for. This is not a hammer I've ever used. I suspected that it was made by a pattern maker um, because I assumed that this was for doing fillets, but I think that somebody has beaten on that, unfortunately, but it would normally be a perfect shape for doing fillets. Um, and this is approximately eight inches long. Um, and uh, the strange thing is that while I was waiting for this uh, meeting to start, um, I, I turned on Facebook real quickly, and there was this, uh, this there was this ad that somebody's selling this hammer. Let me see if I can uh, get it to turn around so you can see. There's the hammer, and it's it's the same pointy end and the same screwdrivers. But this one has an ad on the outside and it's all brass and it has an ad on it for Colgate toothpaste to avoid tartar, um, get the gold uh, something of your toothpaste. So I thought that was very strange and somebody must be listening. But those are not the hammers that I really wanted to show you. This is, this is a, a, a great hammer, it's very old. Um, you can see the handle is pretty beaten up and everything. This is called a Shenny or Chenny hammer because that's the man who invented it. And if you look here, you see there's a screw head right there. And on the other side, there's none. And that's because this hammer has this notch in it with two ball bearings. And there's no need for a screw on both sides. The bit ball bearings are inserted from one side going up in. And, um, and the purpose of this hammer is to hold a nail. So you can reach high above you with the hammer, put in the nail, and then take your hammer off, turn it around, and put the nail in. Chenny made several hammers. Um, this is just one of them. It's got a very steep crook to the uh, claw. There's the screw point, and here you can see the ball bearings in there. Um, and there's a little spring. There's a ball bearing here with a little spring, spring and a spring, and then a screw there. And, and that's the purpose of that hammer. And the last hammer that I'm gonna show you is one that I don't think anybody else in the world has. And that's this hammer. I weighed it, it's approximately two pounds. 
Um, and I think it is also handmade maybe by a blacksmith or something. But um, if any of you have one of these, I would love to see it. Um, let me just give you a tour around it here. It has the word Waddell here, which I'm assuming is the name of the, uh, of the maker. It's like a little anvil on this side and it's curved around this way and it's flat this way and this way, but this is curved this way. And these of course uh, would be uh, for prying, um, uh, tack pulling, I suppose. Maybe it was made by a crate a uh, person who worked on crates, or you could put this in a vise and use this as, as an anvil to turn something over with it, or even use this side, but it's my favorite hammer. I've had it uh, around 20 years now. I have no idea where, uh, where uh, it came from before the man who I bought it from had it, but it's, uh, it's definitely a rarity. And that's it. Wow, thank you, Chester. I think, uh, I wonder if Andy Brown's got something even more unusual in a hammer than that one. That's, here's a challenge, Andy Brown, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're listening. Try I imagine he does. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, over to, I think, Eric. Hi, I've got some in interesting stuff there. Uh, um... The hammer I've got with the most sentimental value is, is this one because it was my grandfather's. It's I've been abused over the years. My father was very generous in lending his tools to people and many of the folk he lent them to didn't know how to use them at all. Uh, it's had a, a lot of boost. It's got a split down the, a split down the, down the, the side of the, the head, which is, you know, I, I don't use it much now. It's been kind of replaced with a more modern modern dual equivalent but uh, I, I use uh, I use a you know the standard sort of lump, lump hammer and uh, you know a, a hide I've got a Thor hide mallet which is great for for closing up uh, tenons and things but my, my favorite hammer is this small one from uh, from Richard Richard Barron which I got uh, it's just so dinky it's really great for chisel work uh, it's you can get such a light tap, or you can really give it a fair whap as well. So it's uh, very, very, very good, very popular. I've sadly abused it because if you have to have it to hand, you want to hammer a nail in or something. I've done that with it, which you shouldn't do with grass. But uh, it's it's survived. It's very good. It just fits in the palm of the hand. You know, the, the, it just fits my hand perfectly. It's got really nice heft. So that's my favourite. David is, there, is there a rod going through it? I see two holes on the side of the hammer. Is yes, there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a bar, you know, a pin holding it, holding it on. But it's also got a wedge at the top as well. So the, the head's very well, very well secured. Nice. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, we're over to Roger Modwick. Hi everyone, CMT. This is not my favorite hammer, but it's one I've dug out. It was given to me some years ago, and I've never known really what it is. On one end, it looks like just an ordinary hammer, but the other one is uh, a little flat, uh, little ax. And I've no idea what its original purpose would have been. It's a plasterer's lathen ax. A lathen is it? Hammer. A what, it's sorry? It's for splitting and fitting lathe work for plasterers. Lath. Lath. Oh, when right. you put up the lath, it's in pieces of wood. Yeah, and you chop it as you do a wall. So you so use the axe to split the lath and then you use the hammer to fix it. To fix it. Ah, oh, that's very interesting. Thank you. I know now. That's me done. Nicely nice. done, Scott. Well spotted. Uh, we're over to Michael. Mike. Yeah, good evening. Um, everybody has some kind of unique hammer and um, special special thing, and I'm exactly the opposite. <laughs> More light over here. Um, I have the standard off-the-shelf Home Depot hammer thing, 
Um, it is as non-unique as it can get. It even has a, a DIN number on it. So it's a German industry norm. So the, it's a normal hammer. It's not unique, but it is unique because it's mine. And I bought it cheaply from the Home Depot 20 years ago. And so far it did the job perfectly every time. And so I'm, I'm really attached to this hammer now. It's, it's nothing special, uh, but it always worked for me, although it's such a cheap thing. And because it's a D-norm, you basically get it in, in different shapes, uh, different weights of the head, but it's basically the same thing. And I use a smaller one to adjust my, my, my plane plates. And, um, but I, I can see that there is something in, in more special tools and, um, I got me some more posh thing. It's not a hammer, it's a method for my chisel work, but it has a bronze head and it's, uh, had, has a little more, more weight like this one. And so I use it to drive my chisels for chisel work. And it's, it's, it's really nice because you can just let it drop and it has enough weight to kind of get the work done and you can also grab it more tightly for, for some finer work. So that's also very nice. Well, Michael, on the second hammer that you showed, on the second hammer, that one, one? What, yeah, yeah, is the, uh, is the ferrule going around the handle a part of the, uh, is it iron also? Is it, I can't see whether it's an added piece or if it's part of the hammer. No, no, I, I think it's it's not part of the metal. It's, it's just ah. uh, some added piece. Uh, th th this is the same thing like this one. It, it, it's just uh, the, the cheap thing you buy from Home Depot. Um, That's all right. Yeah, but it, it, it works. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I, I really I like this one because I got attached to it because it, it get got the job done every time and uh, for such a cheap thing. And um, I use a smaller one for the plane blade. So I don't lag at it like crazy. It's just some small taps, small taps. So um, that also works very, very well for me. Okay, nice. That's what I was what I wanted to show. Amazing. Thank you, Michael. Uh, we're over to Daryl now. Okay, I think I'm unmuted now. Um, I have one hammer here that is not necessarily a favorite of mine, but it's a favorite of my daughter and my wife. I don't know who the guy was who made it. His initials were TW. It appears to be some sort of planishing hammer. My daughter likes to use this one to pound on the spines of her bookbinding projects. And my wife likes to use it to hammer on meat to make it, you know, like schnitzel and stuff. So yeah, yeah, okay, Tate. <laughs> so that's, that's their favorite hammer that I own. The one I like the most is this one here. I bought, I bought this one at a tool sale. I, I saw the hammer and I misread the name and I said, oh, badass hammer. Uh, apparently it's Baza hammer, not badass. And my wife pointed that out to me pretty quickly, but it's nice and heavy and it's got, uh, you can clamp in wood or, or plastic ends on it. And it's got a lot of mass for, for moving stuff. So that's my badass hammer. Thank you. Cheers, Daryl. <laughs> I like the badass hammer. <laughs> I don't read so well. <laughs> <laughs> What was in the uh, head of your room. hammer, Daryl? What's uh, the inside? What ma maple in one end? There's maple, yep. and there's some sort of plastic that it came with on the other end. Some mine, sort of clear one. It's funny. Mine is bronze. I don't know if you can see it. Um, maybe he can share the screen. But uh, but th th this part here is is is. I don't know if you can see the coloring but it's sort of almost like copper. And then this one here, and it may be copper. I don't know if you can see the color. It looks like copper. Um, and it's uh, as well, um, a, oh, and I got it upside down. Let's see, Basa. Yeah. Hammer, but this hammer I got when I bought my TR250 Triumph car and it, I used it. it, it it was in the trunk and it was uh, intended, I guess, to be used on the hub because you had a hammer off hub in the center of your spoked wheels. And that's what I used this for for years. 
before I sold the my Triumph. And um, but uh, I don't know. It, it's certainly not an English company that uh, did it. It was a New York company. So, but it's interesting. These are bronze or bra or copper. Hmm. Yes, but that's a very different hammer, though. Yours is a Baza, and Daryl's is a badass. Good point. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll take that into consideration and write you a letter, Rusty. <laughs> um, I think that should satisfy well, you. This one's Mine a, is a number, number one. Yours is a number yeah. three. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, who's got the number two? <laughs> Rusty. <laughs> he's just not sharing it he's just not sharing <laughs> right we're over to mitch then all right i hope you can hear me because i've uh, plugged into a different microphone tonight um <clears throat> i'm just gonna bring up a couple of japanese hammers one that i was sent by a viewer uh very cheap i guess plain setting hammer really comfortable to use um, may not look great but it is really excellent to use and the other one um, i bought myself from workshop heaven i think it was this japanese hammer uh, i forget how heavy it is i think it's about maybe 300 350 grams and that's excellent for chopping lovely oak handle and wedged end and a hex shaped head although not uh, a regular hexagon. That's all I've got for you. Thank you very much, Mitch. Now we're over to uh, Canada. We're over to Rick. Hey, guys. So, um, <laughs> Chester, you beat me to it. Darn it. Uh -oh. um, so this was uh, this is what I was going to show off, which is the similar hammer. Uh, mine has a, the ball peen on the one side and um, I actually have another one that I'll show in a minute here, but uh, what I've heard as a as a hint was maybe these were um, uh, shop class projects because uh, I've seen a number that are of different like varying qual qualities and different designs and stuff. Um, so yeah, I yeah, think they, it may be they something. Were. My my or, father in law was a was a machine shop teacher. That is one of the projects. Okay. This is, I, I, have, I own two. This one is by far a better quality. Whoever did it knew what they were doing, or at least they, they were, it was a kid with some talent. The other one's a Rick, little I more I think sloppy. you might find that some of them are pro class projects. And obviously by this one here, um, uh, oh. this was store-bought. Um, oh, wow. I have, okay. I have the original box it came in. So whether or not it was a shop project, maybe whether or not it, uh, how crude it is, but Mine has markings that could on be a the tier. Uh, mine has a <laughs> company name, and, and my other ones also have company names. But this one's definitely handmade or, or shop made. Yeah. Whether it was a project, I don't know. But but that doesn't have the screwdriver. So so it could be that this one was um, was professionally made, and the other one was made by uh, a fifteen yeah. year old kid who didn't care. So. <laughs> Um, so, but because you stole that one from me, now I have to go to a different hammer, which this is uh, a hammer that I picked up. I don't know where the handle is horrible. I, whoever used this had dirty hands every time he picked it up. It just, <laughs> it's awful, but, uh, it's a, it's a nice little seven ounce hammer. Um, the brand is serve 55, which doesn't, I've never actually looked it up, but, um, what I really like about it, and I don't know if you can see there is the, uh, how the head has it's almost threaded around there or scalloped or something uh and it just it's a really nice detail on a really ugly hammer and i really like that so so i think this is my favorite hammer since chester stole my other one um <laughs> but my favorite thing about hammers if there's one thing that i i can say i love about hammers i'll just show you here is that they're just so darn where is it they're so darn stackable and this is a favorite thing. Can I get a little bit extra? There we go. This is one of my favorite things to do is take a bunch of hammers and then just stack them up and, and see how high you can get. Uh, this one I did while, um, while we were talking. And then this is my favorite design that I ever came up with. My sledgehammer and then my smallest ball peen hammer. 
right there. <laughs> and there's no value to what I'm doing here. I just think it's fun to stack things on top of each other. So there you go. There's the value. What's the, the one on the left the stacked there? The claw hammer, the small one. Oh, that's, don't knock anything over. That one, this one right here. Yeah, does it have screwdrivers in the head? Yeah, it has it all as well. The, actually, the, the it doesn't, I, what I like about this one is it doesn't rattle when you shake it, whereas this one, hear that rattle in there. Um, this one, well. You just lost your game. Of I, I, I like to stack two hammers. There we go. I'm quite proud of the <laughs> hammers I stacked. <laughs> that is the danger of sta hammer stacking is sometimes they fall down, so. Um, but uh, yeah, oh, well, now that it's down, the uh, mandatory crucible hammer, I got one as well. So, so there you go. Rick, I never met and uh, noticed, but um, the one that I have, similar to your claw hammer um, with, the, with the pieces, this is not one that uh, has any company name on it. So it may have been a shop made one, right. but it, but, uh, I don't know if I'm framed right because you're highlighted. Let me. Um, Shrin, can you uh, highlight them? There you go. Um, so this one, this one is definitely the store bought one because right. I have the box and there's no rattle. This is the one that has no company name on it. It's a claw hammer similar to your one that you had stacked. Uh -huh. Can you hear that? Yeah. See, that's the funny thing because mine is the exact opposite. That one rattles, this one rattles, but it doesn't have that round part that yours has. This is just. Yeah, very... mine, mine has a nice copper end on it, but the one that has the like, uh, like more of a metallic end doesn't rattle. Huh. I wonder if I can reach that other one. Now let's go. We're doing this live, right? Um, yeah, so here's here's mine. No rattle. It's got that yeah. round metallic head on it. And uh, now I wonder if maybe this part wasn't shop made. Or it wasn't like uh, made by the student and was supplied. And their job was to, well, no, because that's not. I don't know. But Who if knows? I look at the screwdriver tip, you see the sort of serrations along it, which reminds yeah. me of, of store-bought ones on the screwdriver itself. Has, um, it has little serrations on the flat. As opposed to being like uh, filed or, or as, sanded As opposed or to smooth and filed, yeah. Yeah. But I guess we'll never know, really. Yeah. Yeah. Funny little set that I actually, I bought the first one because I thought it was a cute little hammer and had no idea there was anything in the handle. And just one day, the fact that it rattles is the way I figured it out. Or today, I would still go, look at this nice little ball peen hammer I have. And it's all metal. And, you know, how cool is that? Hey, and uh, no, actually, there's something more cool about it. So. Yeah, it's fun. I'm gonna try stacking my hammers later tonight. Be careful. <laughs> awesome guys, we're over to uh, Julian. Hi, I don't know whether we all do nostalgia, but that hammer takes me back 60 years, the first tool I was given, and I still have a few other tools that were given to me as a birthday present. Um, that's sorry, it's a Stanley 10 ounce, which for a small child perhaps wasn't a bad hammer to start with. This one, um, any information would be gratefully received. I picked it up from a small tool store the other week. It's got a small head, it's got a claw. The claw is slightly damaged uh, in that this side um, is slightly bent over and the handle is just nicely finger fitting. My feeling is it might be an upholsterer's hammer for tacking in tacks and for levering out tacks when they're in the wrong place. 
Any thoughts? Am I on the right track? Well, it's not like any tack hammer I've ever seen, but the head is similar to other hammers that I've seen, which were really associated with either watchmakers or, or jewelry, people that didn't, didn't much need much force, but they wouldn't need the tack puller side or the claw. So it's confusing in that. Um, and also that long rod is interesting why it's so long. Yeah, is there much uh, spring in that? Yeah, do you get any flex? No, absolutely rock solid. It's a nice um, eight millimeter steel rod and it's fitted into the head just there. It might be a shop made one as well. Yeah. Oftentimes yeah. Uh, tack hammers are magnetic on one side like the one someone else showed earlier. Um, uh, <laughs> um, you know, one side is magnetic to tap the tack in and yep. then use the yep. other side to drive it. Um, it's interesting. It's pretty. Yeah, I it just caught my eye and I thought, yep, yeah. let's go for it. Might be useful so, for burnishing on that handle if it's hardened. Uh, the stem. I, that definitely looks like it's it's homemade. Yeah, and, I think so. And, and it looks like it it's, it meets a special purpose. I know some gunsmiths who like to have light hammer heads with a slight flex in the handle. So when they're doing, um, they're knocking, say, sights in. We're talking old fashioned muzzleloader type guns. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, you're 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 knocking in pins to hold um, certain parts to the guns, et cetera. So I, it, it uh, it's definitely looks like I need a hammer and I need to build something to meet my needs. And <laughs> this is what it came up with. And the person did a really good job. I'd agree. Again, yeah. it's, yeah, yeah the, 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 the nail puller end, the claw end is the, is the worst part of it, if there's anything to say is worst. Only because yeah. the uh, it's not a hollow back, so it's not going to really get under attack very well. Yeah, sure. Um, if if, we, if, yeah. if you measure the, the diameter of the shaft very uh, as accurately as possible, you, you might you might find that uh, whether it's eight millimeter or, or five eighths of an inch, and that might give you a clue as to uh, as to whether it was uh, where it came from. Yeah, yeah. I suspect it's just a local workshop clearance because that's the sort of um, nature of the goods the guy in the tool shop has. Um, I'll do a little bit more research. But it might give you an idea of the age as well. Yes, thank you. Yeah. yeah. More on the aesthetic line, and um, Roger may have seen these. A couple of hammers um, made by a guy called David Barron, who some of you know about. Just beautifully balanced and nicely constructed with a wedge end and held in with a brass pin across the top. And alongside that is another of David's. And I think it's is it possibly Ripple Dash. I'm not sure the handle. Again, beautifully balanced, same construction with a wedge and a pin to hold. Um, solid brass heads, really nice and weighty. I don't know, pound and a half maybe, really quite heavy, but um, just unusual. David made a series of these. He no longer makes tools, I'm afraid, but they're nice to have. Okay. It's interesting that the two faces are not the same. One is a bit more rounded and the other one is Absolutely. very flat. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes very nice. that head is needed and a rounded head. Okay, that's me. Thank you very much. We're over to Andy Brown. I wonder what kind of... Uh... Better be good. Yeah. Andy, your, uh, your video's off. Yeah. Hey, should we do a side bet first to see all how right. large? We'll, we'll, we'll come back to you, Andy. Then, uh, Tim. Uh, well, we're all showing these all these wonderful mallets, and uh, obviously, there's just so many different styles. Um, but my main mallet is my hand. Um, obviously, the palm of your hand. Uh, I'm generally known for my dovetails, um, uh, and obviously, I'm known for my precision in cutting dovetails. And, and that's generally all I need uh, is to bang them home is, is my hand. Uh, you, you get the odd one where you, I have to use a rubber mallet, um, obviously a rubber mallet with a hockey tape wrapped around it, nothing special. Um, 
but uh, generally I use my hand. Obviously, it's God's gift. Uh, you've got two of them. Um, they're convenient. You don't have to fit, stop what you're doing. They're there. Um, so, yeah, I just thought I'd put that one on the table. Um, obviously, I appreciate everybody's got some wonderful mallets. And uh, some of them you probably can't really use. Well, you don't want to use because they're so beautiful. Um, but obviously, I'm a man that likes to use my hands. So uh, that's what I've got for, for everyone. Now, we're recording this. So in 30 years, when you've got all that arthritic issues with your hand, <laughs> you'll have something to remember this time. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I've been using my hands all my life, you know, um, and I think my hands are pretty used to um, used to banging. I've kind of got them used to hitting things. I wouldn't recommend, you know, somebody just start out using them. Um, I've obviously been doing it all my life, and uh, I think now my hands are pretty hardened to to doing that. Um, but like I said, you know, I do. I, I've got the backup. So if I do have a, a very hard piece of wood uh, or something very delicate, then uh, I would obviously just tap it in like you saw me doing on the outset of the video. Um, I was using that rubber mallet, but yeah, generally you just use my hands. Cheers, Tim. Cheers, mate. While we wait for uh, Andy, I'll, I'll uh, show you my hammer. Uh, this is nothing special. Um, it's just a, a claw hammer. Um, with the handle chopped off on the end. Uh, my granddad used to own a hardware store and uh, a customer returned this uh, two days after he bought it because the handle had broken off. So they used it in, in the shop uh, for putting up shelves and things around the shop for, for years uh, with the handle still broken. And when I was probably three or four years old, I went in um, as I used to do in the summer holidays or when I wasn't at nursery and then after that when I wasn't at school I'd be there and uh, one day I went in I was given this hammer about a kilo of nails and a few blocks of wood and I went home with this hammer and that was what started my woodworking journey I guess and I have no idea what the wood is um, it was sort of splintered, slightly splintered off, although the sharp edges had been taken off on the end. And a couple of years ago, I just cleaned up, cleaned up the end because I, I thought it would look a bit nicer. And uh, the, the wood, the colour of the wood is the same as it was inside when I put, sawed off the end and cleaned it up. But yeah, it's, a, it's quite a light hammer, but actually the length of it's quite nice and handy um, for, for pulling out uh, pins and things like that. I use it quite a bit for, for uh, pulling out small pins and uh yeah that's 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 my hammer that's the most valuable hammer i've seen today that's priceless yeah i won't forget this one my granddad's not around anymore either so definitely won't forget this um i'm hoping andy's around andy are you around oh man yeah. here you go there's one in a box. Am I talking? Oh, yeah. There's one in a box here, and I can't bloody find it. <laughs> All right, let me um, let me go back down to the other uh, department. Oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry about this, folks. It's, uh, I should really get prepared, shouldn't I? <laughs> Ooh. It's interesting. There's a tunnel to get you to your little nest. Yeah. Yes. It's. Uh... Are there boxes on either side of the tunnel making up the walls? Yeah. Or Tom, yeah. is that Tom, Dick, or Harry? That tunnel. <laughs> Cute. Little box of three. Should have should have been a box of six. Cornelius White House. Oh, actually, this is William Whitehouse, probably before Cornelius was with them, or after. I don't know. I'd never realised that before. But um, brand new, little ball peen hours. I don't know what the weight is. Atlas Forge. There's them. Little box. And then my own hammer that I can make some more of. 
lead armor. But the interesting part about that is that's the mold for making it. Wow. So that is that somebody's hit something with this and it's deformed the head, so I can't actually get the jaw to shut. But that is the mold for making the lead armor. Well, uh, by next week, you'll have melted that down and made it so it fits, yeah? Yeah, yes, I didn't realise. <laughs> I'd have had to show an explode torch off him. So you just pour in the crucible and then pour off the excess? As no, it cools? Um, you can, well, you can, you can dip it into, um, dip it into a pot, although um, you, I, I think you should warm this up before you use it. Um, but... This is you why think it would I think, crack. Yeah, this is why I think that you you put the the damaged head and some more lead or just some more, some lead anyway in the in the bowl and then put it over the heat, nice. melt them, and there's a, can you see the little hole? Yeah. So you basically <laughs> melt it and then tip it back, and it runs down and into. The, mold so you have one hole for allowing the liquid in and the other hole to allow the gas to come out um no there's only one hole uh, it, oh, to be I honest thought i saw two no that that there is an indent go, little, take, take go down clamp. go down go down into the crucible part there are two holes there um no it's just a blind blind mark it's it's a it's a bit of the poor casting from when they actually cast the whole of this section there's a oh, little bit, there's a little bit of shrink back in the casting that's what that indent is oh. but um this is uh, the thor hammer company 1954 it's a, a military surplus and um I was very lucky with that because it came with that, which is a matching pair because you could also get nothing to do with hammers unless you're, you're working on your vice, but that one makes lead vice jewels. So when it's closed up, you tip it back and you make, an, make a, a soft jaw for your engineer's vices. There we go. But, um, but no, um, I've got two or three of these. I've never, you know where it is? You, you have a go at uh, doing one and then the blinking thing cracks or something. And you think, well, I wish I'd never tried that because I know, I know what it's supposed to do. <laughs> but um, um, I don't know what that means there. It says Q bar, C U B A R, but um, no. So um, the other thing I was trying, I have got the most wicked, slender-headed hammer, um, uh, like an upholsterer's hammer, but the, the head must be nearly twelve inches long, and it is it is no more than half an inch round in its biggest part. Can't find it. <laughs> I seen it the other day, and I've been through them boxes. I can't find it. So that's the curse. Too many boxes, not enough, not enough labels. Well, cheers, Andy, for another unboxing. Though you still right. managed to uh, to unbox something today. So <laughs> that was brilliant. And Always uh, amazing. I think uh, we can all raise our glasses and uh, say cheers. Cheers to the bench, and uh, the bench. cheers to everyone tonight. Cheers. 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 C